This video is an overview to the reactions of glycolysis, but more than anything is the review of the mechanism of the split of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to form dehydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The end product of glycolysis are two units of pyruvate, two molecules of ATP, and two reduced coenzymes, NADH, two protons, and two molecules of water. Depending on the conditions, the fate of pyruvate could be a reduction in anaerobic conditions, for example, in yeast to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide, or the reduction when we are doing extreme exercise to produce the molecule of lactate. In abundance of oxygen, the molecule of pyruvate will undergo an oxidative decarboxylation to produce a zero coenzyme A that can enter the citric acid cycle. When glucose enters the cell, it is immediately phosphorylated on carbon number six. It uses an ATP molecule and it is a reaction catalyzed by hexokinase. When energy is needed, glucose will go through the glycolysis pathway, but when the cell is in need of coenzyme NADPH, glucose 6-phosphate will enter the pentose phosphate pathway. That will generate ribose 5-phosphate, which is the precursor necessary for the sugar in RNA and DNA ribose. On the second step, glucose 6-phosphate will be isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate which is going to be a tautomerization that it will go through an N-diol intermediate. And then after that, we will have a second phosphorylation. This is the investment of a second molecule of ATP. We are going to use another kinase. And every time that we see the kinases and ATP molecules, we need to remember to have the counter ion magnesium 2 plus. If you question what is the need of isomerization from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, it has to do with the end product. The aldol cleavage of glucose 6-phosphate will yield two products with different number of carbons. The cis-carbon bisphosphate produced on step number three is converted into two three-carbon monophosphates, one that is an aldose phosphate and a second one that is a ketose phosphate. The hydroxyacetone phosphate is a ketose and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is an aldose. In this video, we are gonna look at the mechanism of how glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase is participating in this cleavage. From this point, all of the intermediates will be phosphorylated. All of the intermediates will have three carbons unit and the goal is to oxidize the carbons to carboxylic acid group or to a ketone group, to extract electrons in NADH, and to produce ATP and pyruvate. Recall that the synthesis of chalcone that we do in the lab is an aldol condensation reaction. It's a mixed aldol because we use a ketone and an aldehyde, and the product, the initial product, is a beta hydroxy ketone. We can parallel the structure of a beta hydroxyketone with a fructose molecule that in our case for this purpose will be phosphorylated in carbon number one and in carbon number six. But we can see that we have in the beta carbon and hydroxyl group similar to what was the product of the aldol condensation in the synthesis of chalcone. So carbon number four, which is the beta hydroxyl ketone group, will become the aldehyde group when we do the retro aldol condensation reaction. I am taking the liberty of reviewing the retro aldol condensation reaction in which we are using a base to remove the proton from the beta hydroxyl group to release a molecule of water. The tetrahedral that is formed will trigger the cleavage between the alpha and beta carbon. This will lead to the formation of an enolate which is very stable by resonance. And this is as a result of the presence of the oxygen that is an electron withdrawing group in the carbonyl neighbor. Observe the resonance structures of the ketone and also the formation of an aldehyde 
and protonation of the enolate yields the ketone and regenerates the catalyst base. The enzymatic catalysis of aldolase for the split of fructose 1,6 bisphosphate involves not only the retroaldol condensation, but many are the steps that we need to discuss. The active side of this enzyme is going to have a lysine and an important histidine. We are going to form a chief base, which is going to be a protonated amine. We're going to have the aldol cleavage. We are going to produce an enamine. And after protonation of the dehydroxyacetone phosphate enamine, we're going to do hydrolysis of a chief base to produce the split, yielding dehydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. We need to remember all of the concepts that we learned in chapter number 19 in the chapter of aldehydes and ketones when we did the addition of a primary amine to a ketone or carbonyl compound. We literally replace the carbonyl for a carbon nitrogen double bond, what we call an imine. The mechanism of aldolase is going to follow the same chemical reaction as we did in chapter number 19 when primary amines reacted with ketones and aldehyde to produce imines. In this reaction, the amino group adds to the carbonyl carbon protonation of the alkoxa ion and the protonation of the ammonium ion forms a neutral tetrahedral intermediate. After a proton shift from the protonated nitrogen to the alkoxy ion, because the nucleophile nitrogen lone pairs is present that can donate electrons to the carbon, a molecule of water is eliminated. After expelling a molecule of water, the nitrogen creates a chief base. A chief base is usually called an electron sink because they are excellent electron acceptors. We can elaborate a little more in the mechanism of the reaction of aldolase. Reaction of fructose bisphosphate carbonyl group with the amino group of the active site in lysine forms an aminium cation that we call the protonated chief base. A histidine amino acid deprotonates the beta-hydroxyl group, which triggers the formation of a carbonyl and the cleavage between the alpha and beta carbon. Carbon number four in fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will become carbon number one in dehydroxyacetone phosphate. The two electrons between the alpha and beta carbon will shift to form an enamine, which is triggered because of the presence of the shift base that is an excellent electron acceptor. At this point, we have obtained glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and also we have used the chief base to create an enamine intermediate. Now we need to do protonation of the enamine and tautomerization and hydrolysis of the shift base to produce dehydroxyacetone phosphate. Here we observe that histidine protonates the enamine and it yields an aminium cation, another chief base. The last step of the reaction is the hydrolysis of this aminium cation to release the hydroxyacetone phosphate, which is going to regenerate the free active site of this enzyme. Because the plus charge on the nitrogen is more favorable than on an oxygen, we are going to have another proton shift. Lysine gets protonated and histidine deprotonates the oxygen between the two carbons to form the carbonyl. releasing the free enzyme and dehydroxyacetone phosphate.